Mm, uh, looking at the issue of the metronome now, and I personally don't have students play with a metronome, but there is a metronome marking on many pieces by the composer that uh, tells you um, what the tempo of the piece is. And uh, a few of my students are learning the inquietude of Bergmuller. And um, this is a very rapid, uh, according to the metronome, this would be extraordinarily rapid. Um, and if you set the metronome to 138 to the quarter note, um, that's that's going to be quite outrageously fast. Let's see what it is. Okay, so here's the. Um, so that would be the equivalent of the little 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 I was going to examine, first of all, um, in this piece, the harmonic rhythm. It, you know, most people might just pump out the left hand staccato chords all the same without any kind of sense of shaping them. But I, um, I've kind of looked at them over and based upon harmonic rhythm and the organic sense of pro various progressions, um, I would see a one chord in E minor and then I see a four chord, a form of the four chord. I would lean more toward the four and then resolve it down. And as I play it, I would definitely do that. Lean, less. And here comes a dominant. I would lean on the dominant a little bit more, even though it says here that the composer wants you to start soft and make a crescendo. Nonetheless, even if I'm starting soft, I'm still shaping in a certain way that is musical. And I would probably lean, lean, less. Less, and then I'd make my crescendo through this, and that has to resolve too. Because this secondary dominant of B minor it still has to be more than this, and then nothing, nothing. Um, so you, you should be shaping these chords, um, even if they go rapidly, they have to have a shape. Um, in the middle part, he modulates to G major, and he has this strong middle section. His probably bigger than the beginning in terms of the way the beginning started P. This middle section is MF. It's um, higher up and it's in a major key which makes it flesh itself out into what would be the relative major of E minor is G major. E minor is the relative G minor. Uh, e minor is the relative of G major. Um, so when you get here, it's deeper, but I would give more to that diminished neighbor chord give a little emphasis to the yum, and then here's a dominant, and a little bit more, less. So I am shaping as I go along, and then a dominant back to the primary key, E minor. And he also says diminish, getting softer. Now he's back to the beginning, lean, less, see, again and then you have a coda section um, where the left hand has draws long notes connect legato suddenly no more staccato and the way it's written shape the left hand even though it looks like on the surface of it looking at the notes you say oh just I'll just play the same staccato notes in the same volume and in the same way but it really affects the way you play the piece uh, it's the underpinning of the piece um, and then I pointed out to my students before that these trip figures of three notes slur together they're three sixteenths out of four there's a rest in the left hand that's taken rest in the first beat that's taken up uh, on the 16th note by the left hand. The left hand plays the down beats um, and, and the in-between beats. So you want to try to hear Because that goes, that's something he's teaching you in this um, 
piece, technically, is teaching you a redundant motion. So you don't get tired and you can shape nicely. Uh, and the other places where there aren't just steps that are uh, playing in chromatics or in major or minor seconds, there's little bits of leaps. Da -de -do, da -de -do, we so often. Because what you have there is dominant. Da -de -do, da -de -do, last. Da -de -do, da -de -do. You know, so you want to keep uh, be aware of that. Um, how you're shaping your lines is very important. Now, let's hit the metronome. This is absolutely incredibly fast speed. And uh, I, I would never approach the fast speed until way down the line in my practicing where I've got it just the way I want it in slow speed, in very slow tempo. But, let's see. Gosh. No doubt that when I where I just left off, it says in the music, D I M A Poco R A L L. <laughs> You're not going to play that section metronomically. In fact, I don't think you should play anything metronomically. You get to that part, he says, and it musically makes sense um, when he comes back to the E minor, just where I left off. He wants you to get a little bit broader and a little bit slower, and that indeed would make this a very polished performance if you can do that. So we go back to the middle section and we, we do the little bit of diminuendo and pocorilla tondo's broadening. We would then have, try to stick to this tempo. 